She won most talkative in high school, and she has been running her mouth ever since. Welcome to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast with your host, Lisa Fisher. Okay, kids, gather around your device. This is the most compelling hour of uh, broadcasting that can be done quarterly, in fact. The Lisa Fisher Said Podcast with the streaming expert, Natalie Sanderson. Hi. Who has birthed her own <laughs> entire podcast, has fans. In fact, one of them came today. You yes. actually had a fan drive in well, from Sling County. <laughs> well, well, right, but y'all are on the payroll. Because <laughs> some of you are on the payroll. Hannah is not. Well, I'm, I'm extremely grateful and blessed. Because Love all of you, what's so cute is uh, Hannah Folks is here, the sweetheart of Benton, and she and you and I have even had a textual yes, uh, we have com- a group text. relationship. Yes, and we've never you've never met until today, not in real so. life, but we follow each other on the gram. That that's that Whitney is, too, but Whitney and I have known each other. That's called IRL. Yeah. That is in real life. Yeah, no doubt. We have a lot to do, and Whitney Bowers here. She's former Miss Arkansas lovely, USA. Yes, absolutely. You know. I only have pretty Never friends, forget. and then Darren and Jeffrey are very pretty. Yeah, and that's it's worked out for you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go chronologically because some of this people are going to go, that, in the world of streaming, what we're going to talk about feels like a decade ago. Yeah. It feels like before the pandemic that Dead to Me season three dropped. So in the last time, our last exciting episode, we had only watched a couple of episodes of it because we were a little nervous. It was a little sketch. It wasn't warming up. And then I took one for the team. Yeah. I finished it. Yeah. Sobbed like a baby. Did I, y'all see it? No. I, so what's, don't get upset because no, I no. do listen to you and I do yeah, mind no, you, I but know. I let it be, it's finished now. Yeah. So I like to, now I can do like the whole thing. I had seen season one and now I'm going to start all over and do the, the entire show. You'll all love three it. seasons, but I wanted to be able to binge it because I, you know, I was hoping for, I mean, the weather's been so off. I was hoping for a whole weather day but it's not so i'll just have to do that you know okay between clients there will be a time but here's the thing christina applegate is so dear yeah oh i may have loved loved like i could get choked up talking about her yeah she's she's so brave she's going through it she's got ms there are many scenes she can't even walk Mm. she's sitting there she's gained probably 40 pounds from the medicine because they're put on tons of steroids yeah and her character has uh it, it has a little bit of, there's some health issues with her, but it's really um, her crazy, crazy friend who, I'm telling you, you'll ball like a baby. No, I'm, I can't wait to ball it, like a it baby. It ties it all together and it's worth it. It redeems itself and it was worth it. So that was, the last time we were together was right before Thanksgiving. So that was in November. Mm-hmm. We're recording this in February. Mm-hmm. So that starts things off. The next thing we were told to watch because of you yep. was the Casey Anthony doc on Dude. Peacock. Oh, kind of changed your opinion of her, didn't it? It did. Well, it changed my opinion, not so much of her, but of the who done it because it was absolutely her dad. It was absolutely her dad. And I never really like I followed the case sort of, but when I watched this documentary and like listening to her talk, I mean, she no, is a full blown narcissist, like oh, without totally. question. But that's However, not a crime. It's not a crime. Oh my god. It's not. And it and thank God. Yeah. Because right. there, we, I mean, we'd be in everybody's trouble. got a little touch. So. <laughs> Everybody's touched with it, but like she, when I watched this, I I texted our group chat and was like, uh, "Yeah, this is like blew my mind." I was like, "I never," or I forgot about the details of the trial, and then I remembered, and you know, she's talking about her trauma, and I was very empathetic, but I still was like, "I still don't know. We don't have enough information about what happened to your kid," and then they reminded us about the trial when her father testified against her to against get her. the death penalty of his I'm like child. why would anyone do that mm-hmm. oh because, because you, you did, did it. it you need you need no witnesses you need you know leave no trace so that was just just really and wasn't he former law enforcement wasn't or a prosecutor wasn't he somewhere in the I, system he was friends with cops okay maybe that he, he was, had a well he was infiltrated with the police and so I yes. he was absolutely protected yes but um you know she woke up from this nap and he's holding her daughter that fell in the pool and then we all found out he was a great big pervert and so anyway he was in he was in the know he knew it was happened he did it he facilitated the entire thing and then he tried to get her put to death if that's i mean i don't it's i don't it's, i can't even say textbook 
No. He's a murderer. Yeah. He totally did it. Yeah. And he tried to get his and daughter killed for it. Throwing her under the bus. Yeah. And really setting her up in every way, not protecting her, never protecting her. Then it comes out. Then she's she has the freedom to say, let me tell you what happened mm-hmm. to me all these years. Mm-hmm. And because it did look a little sus, y'all, when she was getting the tattoo, she was out partying. Where's the kid? I don't know where the kid... I mean... Well, it was... There were gaps, obviously, in judgment. Didn't look good. <laughs> it didn't look... PR-wise, I'm telling didn't you, it wasn't good. good. And, you know, her lawyer, she wasn't going to bring up the, the abuse from her father growing up and her brother, but her mm-hmm. lawyer, like, shawshanked her at trial, yeah. bringing it up without yeah. telling her. So it was like, the the whole court got to see her actual reaction to it. So it was like, made her even more credible... Well, I don't think she was ever really credible, no, but it made her have some credibility. And that's kind of started the whole like looking outside of her and looking at her dad. Her dad was never prosecuted. Like he's, know, he's still no charges. He's still nothing. out and about, know. you know, just steady, steady chilling. And I don't think they, they, I don't think they talk. I don't think Christmas was good time for them. No, I don't. I think that was uh, everyone do their own thing. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting, she must have. Some uh, Seinfeld called it the Kavorka, mm-hmm. where she had some appeal mm-hmm. with people because that lawyer let her move in, lock, stock, and barrel. Oh, I yeah, I mean, which made me start going, okay, this now looks. It's I'm a, bit, a little uncomfortable with this. It's it was a lot. Yeah, and you know, side you know to table the you know remember we watched that stolen youth documentary where oh. the mm-hmm. well the dad moved in with the kids. Yeah, always moving in situations they don't end well, and I will tell you. But I think that she had nobody. I know. She had no one. I know. Her mother's still with her dad. Her brother is obviously probably miffed about all of that abuse coming out. So I think this man, I think this is an an example of genuine, like, compassion and and actual sincere help Mm -hmm. that he has provided for her to start her life over because her life is ruined. I mean, no matter what, you're accused of murdering your child. That's never going to go away. Well, it's the Monica Lewinsky name. It's Casey Anthony. There right. are names in history that... Uh, Hers wasn't... Uh, Casey Anthony's wasn't as cool as Monica Lewinsky's. Not that it was cool, but, but like... But it wasn't Monica as Lewinsky like, would say, I can't get a job. I can't no. do anything because I walk in. Oh, we're, you're Monica No, Lewinsky. I mean... Bill Casey ruined Anthony. Her life. He ruined yeah, her Casey, life. That's right. Casey Anthony is the same thing. There right. Are, she can't... Dis- people can't know because there's so many people in the world that think they know what she did and they don't believe her and that she's a baby murderer and that she didn't... She got off. So... She genuinely has to be within her own witness protection program. Like, can't people can't know where she lives or she'll... I mean, that's just... I can't even imagine. And she's so recognizable because she still has her youthful beauty mm-hmm. that you you double take and go, well, that's Casey Anthony. You know, yeah. you see her at the Chili's. You can't like, just like put Casey your hair in a ponytail and no. change. Baseball cap it. No, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. No, but it changed my opinion of her. It totally and did. And I now have empathy for it. And yes. in the beginning, I wanted to throw the book. So there. I just wasn't sure. I just thought it was all very gray and weird, but I assumed she did it because like there was no, it there wasn't like any it. information no. to tell me otherwise. No, because there was a dead child in a car and there was right. a smell of a dead child and what, wait, and what? she was out partying. I and was, she was out partying. We and definitely took it at face value and then maybe if I'd followed it close, I, you know, I was younger. I'd maybe, I, maybe we, I was out partying and I, I obviously know. didn't pay enough attention right. to, the, to the trial. We had the internet. I don't know what we were doing, but we weren't getting the details that and we this, have now. And this popped up out of nowhere. Yeah. This docu series, we were like, "Whoa!" I had forgotten about it, and then this popped up, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I was, I and I texted you. I was like, I "She didn't do it." I like, know she didn't do I it. I know. And then when I told people to watch it, they said, "Well, actually, there are several uh, documentaries on her right now, but the one we watched, there were two maybe on Peacock. It was." Three episodes. It was three episodes, mm-hmm. but there may have been two different series because mm-hmm. I think Matt, Darren's son, mm-hmm. was watching the other one. I go, no, 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 the yeah, other one. Yeah, we were crossed on that one. Yeah, <laughs> okay. we had to get back. No, yeah. no, no, the other one. So it's the one with the three episodes. Because she'd never done an interview. I know. And then finally she's now like talking, which I know. Because, I mean, I, I guess. Yeah. I hope she's getting paid at least. Yeah. Give her I some money. Yeah. Um, and again, we're going chronologically, so some of these were a few months ago, but this is something you need to see. I meant to look up this actress's name who played the lead in this. Aubrey Plaza. Okay. And I haven't Ob- even seen it yet, obsessed. but it's on my, it's in my queue. Okay. Obsessed with her because she was also in uh, White Lotus season two. Parks and Rec. This is Emily that's the what, Criminal on that's Netflix. What, that's what my kids said. They were like, mom, that's Parks and Rec. So Emily the Criminal on Netflix. It is something, I never watch anything twice, but I watched it and- 
You watched I, it twice? Because my husband didn't watch it because oh. I didn't think he'd like it. And then I went, oh, no, you'd like it because there are plot twists in Emily the Criminal. Okay. That, I'm star that. That's going to be. Like, have y'all seen it, Hannah? Have y'all seen Didn't you like it? Is it so good? She is. She is like. She is the new, really which, good. She's not even a new actress. Like, she's been on the mm-hmm. scene, but she is like seriously blowing up right now with her White dead, Lotus season okay, two. Okay. Uh, the White Lotus season two. Is she always deadpan then? That's her thing. Okay. Then she's really good at it. Um, dry, she, dry, dry, just wait. dry. You just wait. I'm excited because um, she she finally hooks up with this guy who gets her into nefarious activities, and his mom says, "Well, in our country, we always um, have a, a moniker to your name, and what they call her, Emily, the teacher, Emily, the so and so." And she was like, "No, she's Emily, the criminal." Is mm. what she is. So you see, you're like, ding, ding, ding. Yeah. She does a great job. She's a badass. I in love it. it. Don't you think, Hannah, she's a badass? Because in the end... <laughs> well, don't. I'm not. Not. But I'm telling you, because the plot twist, you're not going to figure it out. I love you're it. You're not going to figure it out. But it's what uh, people do in order, in the beginning, she had to make some money to pay off some debt. And, you know, that's the whole premise of Breaking Bad, remember? Right. He was yes. in a financial situation, no, couldn't get anyone to help. So not that we are suggesting you break the law, kids. So uh, Just used your knowledge at the things that he what, was a chemistry teacher. Right. He used his knowledge right. to do something he became really good at. He should have cured cancer. But instead, he made a whole lot of blow. Tomato, meth, tomato, it tomato. It was, it was meth. <laughs> right. But, I mean, you know, find meth. your strengths. That's all we're saying. <laughs> that's right. Um, okay, the next one is, y'all, I didn't think I'd like it. It's the Chippendales. I didn't finish it. Wait. But I liked it. It is kind of a, it's a documentary because it has the facts. How the Chippendales started was not that we wanted to see greased up men. Sorry, I know, but that's how it started. For women. for yourself. It started for women, though. I'm just saying that the other characters got involved. Right. When Darren, they all found out, they're like, oh. But it started um, as this business venture from an Indian man from L.A. who had worked for this guy in the, uh, I think, gas station. Mm -hmm. And he had saved all of his fur pelts for five years. He goes, I'm opening a business. And I think the first business, like, was chess or something. You were going to... A chess club in L.A. Mm-hmm. Oh, backgammon, backgammon. That was mm-hmm. it. Well, nobody came. Sure. Mm-hmm. Snooze. Mm-hmm. Snooze. Take your shirt off and play it. That's different. And then it <laughs> somehow got to the point. Men or women. Right. It mm-hmm. got to the point where all of a sudden somebody dropped some trowel and people were lined up at the door. It oh, was that the gets place. the crowd. That's a crowd pleaser. And you know what it was? Hugh Hefner influenced him. Mm. It, Sex sells and Hugh Hefner, the business model of what Hugh, because that's when, remember, there was a Playboy Club and sure. uh, bunnies came out and all that. Sure. And Hugh Hefner influenced him in such a way that he said, I think I can make this work. And mm-hmm. then the guy who takes it to New York, I mean, you have to watch the whole thing, but it's something that I didn't know it had that angle to it. I made the mistake of watching the 2020 episode about it before the show came out. Oh. And I have to just admit, um, when I was growing up, you know, Chris Farley, was oh, the SNL cast. I mean, I'll and when never I was, forget and it. When I think Chippendales, I just start laughing yes, about you do. Chris, yes. Chris Farley and Patrick Swayze doing the Chippendales. I can't even dance. So I'm like, it's hard to talk I'm supposed. About I'm like, I'm watching something called the Chippendales, and I'm not going to see Chris Farley take his shirt I know, off. I know. And Patrick Swayze right. mm-hmm. with that bod too soon, and those moves. I, mean, I know. On. I'm sorry. I didn't those mean to two. bring it up. I know. I know. It's those painful, two but just so endearing. I, I just. I need. I, do I have to go back or I kind of know, I know what happens. Like I know the real, the you, real story. So you know the whole story. Okay, yeah. There's well, a murder dirter involved. Yes. There are definitely a murder dirter. Yep. And that's maybe an episode two, one or mm-hmm. two. It's like early on three. Maybe it does start with the murder. Okay. That's a flashback. Okay. Uh, again, this was in November. I watched it. That was 10 years ago God, in streaming years. It. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for us I to know. remember. Uh, but it was something that um, you definitely need. Yeah, to it's check it's out. entertaining. I know, and I and I mean the whole story is so wild because no one ever like thought to think about the drama that went behind the Chippendales. That there was any. I mean, you know, you just know there's drama with Playboys. I yes, mean, you know that's what that's, I'm saying. That's dark. You know that's going to be messed up. Yes, this is just this guy it's, who it's still it's saves still messed his up. money and says I'm going to have a business. And then there's the power struggle, control. Money, murder. It's 
really, it sounds like someone something, someone gets it. Yeah, it sounds like something that happens with the royal family. Sure. You know I mean, which we don't do books or anything, but that may be a book we could talk about. I sometime. thought about it, but I watched so many interviews. I know that we I, all I'm, know what I'm just, happens. It's so cringe. Yeah. I just I'm not so. It's and we're so talking cringe. horse. We're talking about spare. Prince Harry's. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I root for Harry, like, no doubt. I always will because he's Princess Diana's son. So indulged. They but are so indulged, self-centered. Talk so, about narcissists. Oh, God, it's so cringe. I mean, the, both of them. Just, both of them. She, I, I, she's ick. Ugh, agreed. She's ick. She's a dork. Let me tell you, it's not that I think that she's, like, the sociopath, you know, strategic no, I mastermind. Don't, I, I think don't she either. thinks she's funny. I think she's a dork. And I think that she thought that she was coming into something else and I think she has him wrapped around her finger but I don't think I just I think people need to stop giving credit where it's not due she's a excuse me I almost said effing she's a dork yeah, he knows how to beep things I out. know but that we don't have to beep on your show <laughs> okay but I mean she's just think I mean she's just well here's where she really douche. lost me in the beginning when they said well did you google him she went no well she lied she knew exactly what she was doing. I Googled you before you came to see who if you had a new rap sheet. Right? I mean, you know, you but don't know. She That's was so notoriously dumb. known for being obsessed with Princess Diana her whole life. Well, and she's like, who's Harry? <laughs> I mean, Harry. shut up. <laughs> I know. You're an actress. I know. And this is my last little tidbit I'll say about her. Stop comparing yourself to Princess Diana. I know. She was, Princess Diana was 19 years old, right. super naive. You were a 36 year old woman. Already You'd been married. married before. That's right. And, and on a TV show. And not your first rodeo. You were on the USA Network. Shh. That's right. Stop it. And you were, uh, not like Princess Diana. You had Diana. the money boxes with a deal or no deal. So don't give me that. She I'm, was also the UPS girl from Horrible Bosses. I noticed oh, that when was. I was rewatching that. Hungover. Is that right? Yeah. Was she a bad actress? Bad actress? She's in it for two seconds. She's like, here, sign for this. I don't oh. think there's time yeah. to even be bad. Yeah, right. But and, like, just, and Princess Di would have never done that. Princess when, Diana is of out of our caliber, uh, uh, out agree. of this world. I agree. And so when she does this whole like, me, me, you know, God, shut up, dork. <laughs> shut up, dork. But otherwise, I have no like ill will, whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think that she- You have no opinion. I don't. I think that she put up with a lot of racism <laughs> and things that I, I think were horrible. And I think that the- the tabloids, the I think the mirror is horrible. I think I I I do I sympathize for that, but like as a personality, stop it. Then get out of the game. If you hate yeah, with all of this, of like game. just just yeah, please be quiet. You know yeah, I mean? please be quiet. Okay, now we get into the real meat of uh, this <laughs> podcast, and we have several um, shows that we're going to talk about that have brought me so much glee. <laughs> and y'all, this first one. <laughs> Until you see it, you're not ready, but it's Paul T. Gl- Goldman. Paul T. Goldman. <laughs> Paul T. Goldman. Bless it is all Don't you Don't get can me say. started. Lisa, I could spend the whole episode <laughs> talking about Paul T. Goldman. I have not laughed so hard the first three episodes because I thought it was fake. It's not fake. No. It's it, a but documentary he's, but he's about playing a, himself. 20 years ago <laughs> and has like hair dye or a wig on. Bless. Trying to... He's 60, trying to play a four-year-old version of himself. He was wronged by a woman. So he can't just be wronged by a woman. He has to have been like, oh, well, she started a sex ring. I don't just get, I don't just get broken up with. Like, this woman started a sex ring. She is a prostitute. She's a sex trafficker, blah, 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 blah. So was he worth so much money that... No. Then what made him think he had the, the Kavorka? Because he's crazy. Uh-huh. Also, side note... Someone that's like really trying to get the FBI involved with sex trafficking probably shouldn't mention that they have purchased a mail order, order bride for their first wife. That was going to say, just, that was the just first some, wife. Just a suggestion. Yeah. Because like, but it, it doesn't matter. Like he is so, I said he's very waiting for Guffman like that he, it's very, it seems it like is. a mockumentary, yeah, it does. but it's not. No, it does. And no. it's so and he's entertaining. Serious. And at first you're kind of like, oh man, like you don't know if something really bad happened to him. He's like, this is 100% true. Then each episode goes on. He's like, this is 94% so true. Who, You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know. Whoa. Then he changes it. And this who, is like 70% true. I'm like, this <laughs> none of this is true. You are crazy. Then who funded this project? It's like Seth Rogen and the co-writer from they, Borat. Oh, oh. These genius that so people they, saw him on Twitter and they were like, oh my oh, God. Oh, he didn't know they were making fun of he him He is in on the joke. Ish. Eventually. Yeah, ish. He's just so narcissistic that he like can't, it's, he's not accepting that they obviously told him probably on the front end because they I could have been know. sued. 
They would oh, have been sued. That's true. But he sure plays himself, and he hires these people to play the ex-wife and well, the two ex-wives. I, and those, I, it's and those, speechless. those women bless their hearts. The actress that plays the mm-hmm. I can't. She and was then so his, sweet. his creative freedom. His creative freedom with the explosions yeah. mm-hmm. and bombs bless. and stuff. Bless. That never happened. No, bless. Spoiler alert. Okay. It never happened. Uh, but yeah. you need to watch it. That's yeah, Paul T. So Goldman. Good. What uh, network? Was that who? That's Peacock. Peacock. That was Peacock. I mm-hmm. tell you, Peacock's kind of... Oh, it's really my jam right now. It's kind of killing it. Mm-hmm. We're going to get to another Peacock in a minute because this next one... If you people haven't seen Kai, the hatchet-wielding homeless guy... I had to watch it twice because I was like, no, I didn't see that right. Uh, I didn't see that right. Are, were you weren't ready. I, I just you, didn't see that right. You're not ready. Excuse me, sir. We're, we're, we're conducting a podcast here. My husband hey, walked Chris. in. It's his home, but th- these are my people. I, I, yeah, you missed it. He, the I reason, turn around. I knew thank I would lose it. I didn't my turn around because right. I was like, I'm going to start mm-hmm. laughing. Right. Yeah. He was the Paul T. Goldman of this conversation <laughs> just now. <laughs> so. It's all about him now. That's good. <laughs> His mail order bride is that's trying good. to conduct a podcast. Oh, you know, you'd be the second wife. The, the, the prostitution ring. That's true. That's you'd true. be in charge. Uh, Kai, the hatchet wielding homeless guy, I is was a, shocked. Is about this ebullient, charismatic character who um, saves a man's life on the side of the road in Southern California or someplace in California because he. Well, he's a this homeless drifter. guy. Yeah, he's a, he's a drifter. And he's going from A to B, and he and he tells it, and it becomes a famous meme and a scene. Because well, he was this he, hero. He Yes, he, he reenacts it. He Wait, so this guy, he was what, witnessing an attack, he was, like a he, fight between this man and a woman, and he went and he had a hatchet. Or he, he happened went to have like, a hatchet. Happened in, to have a hatchet, in, and he went and beat, like, got the, the main assailant attacked him and stopped the yeah. the yeah he the saved fight. he saved someone's so he life was this so, hero. yeah he was this hero the tv cameras show up he hadn't brushed any hair on his head in months mm-hmm. a, a toothbrush mm-hmm. probably never saw his and teeth. Un- weirdly enough he wasn't wildly unattractive no he was that's what i'm saying he had some charisma about well, him well he was physically a little he, i mean it, beggars can't be choosers am i right yeah, right right <laughs> well in the homeless world he was yeah. mr Pandemic. universe i'm single but Things turn south for him. Oh, yeah. Because what people need to see often with um, not necessarily always the homeless community, there may be, we, we've talked about this before you all came, there's mental illness everywhere. And right. he had some serious mental illness. He was a psychopath. He was a psychopath. Yeah. And um, somebody he met at a bus station somehow in Jersey. Oh, God. Well, things didn't turn out so well for mm-hmm. him. No. So, Don't keep taking the same drifter in your house when you're already getting red flags no it's no it's not victim's fault no but just read People. the room red flags let's everybody just and a it's just sad because like this you know he's he went from this like hero to was like a great story right to serving the rest of his life in a new jersey yeah i mean he's, he's awful person. horrible person yeah horrible person so let's move on to a, a movie that had this ensemble cast that you are, I've never seen anything like it. I, I've never seen, talk about your plot twists, people. Yeah, yeah. It's the menu. So good. Rafe Fines. Mm-hmm. that's how that's pronounced. Yep, Rafe Fines. Who, uh, these are characters, you, the guy from the Sonic commercials is in it. You know, like. John Leguizamo is in it. John Leguizamo's in, in it. Nicholas Holt. There are so many characters you'll go. Oh, Judith I, Light. Judith Light. Judith Light has absolutely reinvented herself. Dude, she's all back. She's all back. She's I, back all the way. I love it. I, Not that she should have ever left. No, but. I didn't know. But you kind of wondered. You go, oh, she's still Did alive? Did she take a break? Yeah. 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 Who's the boss? From who's the boss to this, she's doing great. So I she, think that shows holds up. I don't know. So I don't know. Okay. I have to, I don't know. But here's what you need to know about this. You, you're not ready for the twist that happened because you've never seen this happen before your eyes and it almost makes you want to turn the your device off your TV wherever you're watching it. But then you kind of I watched with one eye open mm. because I thought, what is going to happen? Oh my god! Well, it's kind of like a dark comedy horror movie. I think that's how it's described. It is as, because okay. my friend Jason is a chef. He's a classically trained chef. Yeah. Went to culinary school, and he picked up on all the kitschy comedy about the cult life oh. of these 
these um, yes, fancy chef, like per se and, they, and French laundry, all these yes. restaurants that are, live like this. And it's like, yes, chef. And yes. it's very militant and, yes. and weird. And it, and honestly, We're, this movie is basically a parody of real life and a chef. Very worshipful yes, of the chef. Like a cult. Like he's, yes, the, there's the leader can, and he, then there are the followers. And which he can you do pick anything. Yes. He can do no wrong. They pick up on that. But I was so terrified this whole time. One, I knew it was supposed to be dark comedy, but again, when Ray Fiennes associates, like, what do you know? It, when Ray Fiennes like was talking like that, like the last scary movie I saw him in was Red Dragon, and oh, he was the Red, Red Dragon. Dragon. It was the it was the Silence of the Lamb prequel. Yes, and it was so he had not like a wooden lot of teeth. Yucks. Oh, yeah. zero. Ooh. That movie, I'm still not okay. But Man. he he was making that face and yes. sounding like that. So I was just really scared the whole time. Oh, then after, I kind of have chills. You talking about when it, it was <laughs> over? I was like, oh my god, yes, lol, I get it. Like, but it was completely. At, it was like during the credits. I was yeah. like, because the whole time I was like, oh, oh my god, I was mm-hmm. so anxious. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, I was like, that was amazing. Like mm-hmm. I so get that comedy. But and it you was know who else is in it? Is it Anna, Anna? Taylor Joy? Oh, I'm Anna obsessed Taylor, with yeah. her. Yeah. She was the Queen's Gambit. Yes. She was a redhead then. They, and yes. she's not a redhead. I think she's a blonde, but she plays these enigmatic she's an amazing redheads. Actress. With yeah. This. She was in The Witch. It was like the first like scary movie that she was in. And then like. Is she an American actress? She's um, half American, half British. Okay. Or maybe her, part, actually might be part like Chilean. Brit- I mean. Is that right? She's. Because many people in this were British. Act- well, Ray Fiennes and some others are British actors. Uh, right. and actresses and they play these um g- so it's these gullible americans going to it was 12 1500 dollars a plate or something at and, least and of course they wanted to go because it was such an honor things don't end up really well for all of them each patron represents a loathed segment character of, of, yeah, of totally. society and for a for the people that own these restaurants yeah for these like fancy highfalutin Oh my god! I still say highfalutin. It is highfalutin, it is highfalutin. restaurants. Then this, the each table was uh, represented. Yes, some, something that right. the chef people, like these these teams hate. Oh, because the one guy who had the affair. Oh god! And she talked about that. Oh I mean, my it's, god! It's cringy. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. And it's because it's so different, and I hadn't seen a movie like that in so long. So it was, a, I was, like, I loved it. So I mean, the, after at the end, you didn't think things were going to work out so well for him, did you? Well, I, I don't want to ruin anything, but at that last scene. Um, I started sweating. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was like, holy mother of God, I am so uncomfortable. And this is, this is, here we are. Yeah. No. And it, it's going to happen. It was something. There was no like Indiana Jones ending. Yeah. Nobody rides off on horseback into the great something. beyond. It was, it was something. Yeah. So it's, it's really good. It's the menu. Highly it's, recommend. It's HBO. We're going to take a break, come back. We're going to talk about BJ Novak's in a oh, movie that. that I'm crazy about. And then our... Uh, a couple of our new favorite shows that you can get on Netflix, Apple TV, all the things, so stick around. Okay, kids, we're back, and we're going to talk about something on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime has had a couple of things that has uh, piqued my interest. We're gonna, I'm looking at my list. And one of them, uh, you know, B.J. Novak was America's sweetheart when he was on The Office. Uh, the office. He wrote, he was like head writer of The Office, too. And so this is Vengeance, his story where... He, he plays um, a, a Jew from New York. He's who, a podcaster. He's a podcaster, right, exactly. His own podcast. And a journalist, so he has some, you know, he has a journalist mind. And oh, he, no, he wants, he's, you're that, right, that, he's that a journalist, yes, you're right, journalist. and he wants to have a podcast. And, and he's working. You and know, Issa Rae is this, like, friend of his that's, like, this amazing podcast producer, creator gal. And so he didn't know that this girl he'd, and one, one night, Sandy had had a fleeting relationship. They it, were just, they just hooked up a few times. It was a booty call. Come on. I mean. I mean, that was it. It happens. But she loved him with all her heart and told everybody well, in we, Suck Your Toe, Texas. Well, that's what we. That's right. That um, she loved him. So when she shows up dead one day, they call him. He's like, oh, dude, his, sorry. His yeah. family calls. Yeah, and he's like, sorry to hear this. And and they're like, well, you. What time, your, what time is your flight? What time you're are you coming, coming down to, the to Texas? Yeah. <laughs> he went, what? And he's like, hey. <laughs> and they're like, and he feels too guilty to not go. And then he infiltrates himself with his family and then creates this podcast to figure out what happened to her. I did not expect to like this movie. I loved this I loved movie. It. I had no idea. I loved it. And I just like, and it was one of the, it's one of the first movies. Well, I guess there's been a few, like the menu I did. I did not touch my phone. 
No, I no, I didn't touch my phone. And I loved it. And Ashton Kutcher, Ashton, God, he's taken up running and just looks better and better. Yeah, well, God. But you that know, jawline. His jawline's good. I have a wild crush on him. Well, I just can't really even go there right and now. And there's something And else. I don't think a lot of people still do, but well, I'm a writer day, I suppose. He's, go on. He's got two that we're going to talk about this episode because he's got another um, show that he was in, a movie he was in that we will discuss that was uh, the romantic uh, Oh, yeah. I didn't that, watch it yet. Well, well, we'll go back to he, it. He, I mean, he, he's endearing. I will say that. He's, he's very hot, but he's very good in that because he's got the shotgun in the back. And Look, there, he's got that button, that like <laughs> weird Texas vibe, but it's like Texas L.A. Like I wear my like Harry Styles buttoned at the very belly button and then that's it. <laughs> but he has like the right amount of chest hair. So yeah, it's not like, it? you know what I mean? No, my, I, I really I feel like I've gone to my own little world. OK. Um, go, I need a rain. I need a reel on back. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great movie. Don't get as deep as you want. I know it? it's, it's getting weird. So um, I, I, that movie is really good. It's like, it's got action. It's, it's funny. It's smart. And BJ Novick wrote and directed he's th- this movie. And he's, he is yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Like he really and he's is. he's in it. I mean, and he's, he's in star. it. He started it. It was such a good movie. Uh-huh. I just, it completely surprised me. Kind of a sleeper in that I hadn't heard anyone talk about it, but my husband, Chris, is the one who said, I think you're going to like this. He knew the character. Because remember, they start, this is what Chris loved about it. In the beginning, all they do is say each other at a bar is 100%. 100%. 100%. And you know what? 100%. Ever since then, I noticed I say that just like those guys. 100%. Like, my friends and I, my guy friends are like, yeah, what do you think? 100%. I'm like, God, (laughs) no. I don't want to be like John Mayer, who's in the movie as this douchebag, who's like, 100%. 100%. I'm now, I'm just like, neat. Totally. Yeah, right. right. Won't say that. Yeah, right. Because I was just like those bros. Right, dude. (laughs) Instead of 100%. I get that. 100%. No doubt. So that was a, a funny thing. Loved it. Okay, let's move on to um, something that is sweeping the nation. And I I liken this series on Peacock is it's uh, going way back. Columbo was something your your grandparents mm. watched. And then your mother and dad watched Murder, She Wrote. Love Murder, She Wrote. And somehow Angela Lansbury was always with people and they died. That's what happens with Natasha Leone as the lead in Poker Face. I just she got is, goosebumps. That's like the best description and intro you, to that show. You. They should have you do that. <laughs> because that's, I mean, you just completely nailed it. Like, she, she is like the chains, new generation yes, chain, chain smoking, smoking. And, you know, I love when people smoke. I, I love her voice. I uh, love her, her voice. I've loved her forever. Well, she was in Russian Doll and she was a redhead. And yeah, that's how I remember her. She was in the her. slums of Beverly Hills. Orange She's is been Orange is Black. She is was so underrated and Wait, she's so funny. And who did she live with forever? Was it Fred Armisen? What? They were to, they, they were she together. dated Fred Armisen okay, for but like a decade. They busted up. Yeah. They're still friends. I know. He came and helped when she hosted Saturday Night Live last season. He came on as one of the guests and support right? her. Yeah. Okay. They're still buddies. That makes me love him. She seems easy to love and well, easy to remain friends okay, with. Go down the rabbit hole about her story. She's estranged from her family, all the things, you know, then you, you have to learn all about her because right. Because she has depth as a she's actress, tough. she's tough that I can't explain. Mm-hmm. And y'all, she's wildly funny. She's adorable. And, and her the the appeal of this is she solves uh, crimes because she has a BS meter. She can tell if you're lying. She it's that's her poker. <clears throat> like and it, she works in a casino initially, and, and she can tell when people are lying. But these in this show is from the it's very visually appealing. Very and there's a lot of celebrities. Adrian in Brody, episode. sure. Judith, yeah, Judith yeah, White. Judith White. So oh, many. That was Benjamin a great Bratt. Episode. How hot is Benj- he still? Yeah, Benjamin Bratt has not. OMG, aged all caps. A mm-hmm. minute. OMG, Love all caps. And not lower caps. Each, lower but case. this was written by Knives Out. Oh, it That's was. That's why it visually looks similar. Oh, got it. Um, but you know, I hate to. We don't have to talk about Glass Onion. I know it wasn't as well received. Yeah, but right. Knives Out is, I think, Knives- a really good. Oh, that was too. a good, good one, and I that's too. why people wanted to watch Glass Onion, and maybe were disappointed. Mm-hmm. I just like the visuals, but this show is visually appealing, packed with celebrities. I know. Natasha Leone, it's one hour. Natasha Leone, each episode is unique. Okay, now I'm going to go way back, but back when the earth cooled and Love Boat was on, there were different celebrities each week. Yeah. That's what they did. We need more of that. The Fantasy mm. Island. Those things brought in these people. Was they, I like two when that, when, when yeah, that came before, out? In your mother's womb. Mm. I mean... Mm-hmm. 70s early 80s mm, mm-hmm. but that's mm. when you would see it would say <laughs> you too. special guest star and it would be 
Farrah Fawcett majors, you know, when her Love. last name was majors or so-and-so or That's whoever. So I, I didn't mean, know Farrah Fawcett's last name was majors. At one time when she was married to Lee majors, he was six million dollar man. Mm-hmm. We need to table that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, well, that show, it's, it's, it's still going on. I, I, have, I am behind because I want to binge watch the last so good. four episodes. So I'm, I'm behind and I'm doing that on purpose. Each so episode good. has a twist to it because they open each scene. She's not in the opening scene. Mm-mm. So you're, you're wondering, how is she going to weasel her way? Because her gonna, face is the cover of the show. That's right. How's so she you're gonna, wondering. Uh, Angela Lansbury her way into the de- in this death. Mm-hmm. And sometimes she's in that mm-hmm. part of it or she, she solves it. Show it and then they go back with her. They do the foreshadowing and they then they do. do the like the back check. And you that's the literary terms. Yes, that was very good. Thank you. They, back check um, is not one. But you have up. to track because in the first episode you're going, wait, what? And yeah. it's because they're going back. So very good. Poker it's face. Really well done. On Peacock. She's gonna win all the awards, no doubt. Oh my god. No doubt. She she's, there's something about her that is she's huh. got that thing. She's got it. That raspy boy. Oh. She is just a doll. She's a doll. She is. Oh, Nick Nolte was in the episode I don't just tell me, watched. Don't tell me, don't tell me. No, no, it. Wasn't not that there good? Yet, not there yet, not there yet. Not there yet. But no, you're, you're not going to figure I it out. I love when Nick Nolte's in stuff. You just, what? he's still alive. Well, of course he's still alive. But like, you know, he's very particular. And the last thing I saw him was Tropic Thunder, one of my favorite Tropic movies Thunder. ever. <laughs> For the rest of my life, oh my I stand gosh. by that movie. I support it 100%. Amazing. 100%. Wild, amazing movie. I own it and I watch it maybe once every three weeks. Just, <laughs> just, just when I'm upset. Oh, my god. It gosh. makes me so happy. It's I used so to do funny. that with Zoolander. I do that with Zoolander. Oh, Zoolander, I just love it. Zoolander brought, brings a side to me. Doesn't it? I, I almost get choked up. Oh, I just love it. Oh, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that about you. Oh, I will I'm, use that. Will Ferrell? I mean, there are so many characters. You got to? Yeah. Oh, my I know. gosh. There are so many characters. I even love the second one. Didn't the first time I watched it. The fourth time I watched it, love it. Well, Zoolander wasn't good the first couple of times. I saw in the theater, and I had really bad allergies that time. I think I went with my boyfriend at the time, and I was like, I can't really appreciate it because like, but aller- I'm like, bubble girl. Like, I have all <laughs> yeah, the allergies. Like, yeah. It's just so stupid. So when I watched it again, I was like, this is like the best thing I've ever seen. Until I saw Tropic Thunder. Okay. So if you haven't, by the side note, I, table, if you haven't watched Tropic Thunder lately, do it again. It's just, per, it's a perfect okay. movie. Putting it's a perfect that, comedy. Putting that down. because Oh my God. I don't think. You're I've, welcome. I don't think I've ever seen it. What? Sorry. Nick Nolte? No, I just. Ben Stiller, you know. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, right. I know. Jack Black. I know the cast. I Matthew just, McConaughey, Tom Cruise. Oh my. Get out of here oh with my. this. I'm, I'm not s- mad at you, but I'm not not mad at you. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. But you're also welcome. I'm actually excited to hear you. All right. Talk about I got it. Okay. Um, next on our list is Apple TV, Harrison Ford, <sighs> among others. Ay, 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 ay. He, he weaves his way in. He has no charisma, but his lack of charisma is Speak for yourself. No, but that's his deadpan. Right. And that's part of his. I find that charismatic? wildly charismatic and charming <laughs> that he like doesn't care. No, he doesn't care. Because it makes me pine for him to care. <laughs> that's, if anyone knows me, that's how you get me. Oh, is Act that Act like it? you don't care or don't think I'm funny. Guess what? I'm going to chase you down the street and try and change your mind. <laughs> I'm going to run you. Because I need you to like me. Run you down. I need you to like me. Okay. The Harrison Ford has this appeal. Uh, he's the psychiatrist, right? They're, so is Jason Siegel. Uh, I love Jason Siegel. I do too. Now, I love him. And I love the angle of his in that um, he's trying to raise his kid. He's trying to do right. And she can't stand him. Well. Well, he is. He's a little late to the game. He's very late to the so game. So the show is called Shrinking. It's on Apple TV. And the premise is, yes, Jason Siegel has gone through trauma. Yes. His wife has passed away. And he was completely unprepared to handle that with having a teenage daughter. She's like 17. Isn't yeah. She? Like, and I Junior can't senior. imagine navigating. I yeah. mean, like, of course, like what a nightmare, but he absolutely checked out and she has like been dealing with it on her own with the neighbor friend, the yeah. neighbor, the neighbor lady has like kind of adopted her. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of like checked out. Right. And then Harrison Ford, the glorious and most incredible man that he is my number one do you think so? Oh, no, he's my number one. Oh, Like, he, overall. If more, I had to say my number one ever. More than BP? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, oh. I've, you know what I've learned as, as I get older? Yes. I've learned with age that I have, <laughs> I have people in my life, one of my best friends, Holly Barron, adores Brad Pitt more than I do. So when I, when I caught that, I was like. She can have him? No, 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 no. Oh. No, she's married. I'm not. Mm. 
But um, I get that he's not my total number one. Like, I have, like, a bunch, right? But, like, Harrison Ford is always... <laughs> Well, number, Macaulay number Culkin one. used to be up there. All right, Macaulay, I was a child, and, you know, he That's was right. he was very cute as a child when we were both eight. And that uh, was mine. Which we will segue into Kieran in just a minute. Oh, but first, let's finish. Harrison Ford also has a renaissance, resurgence of his appeal in mm-hmm. that he's in one of the Taylor Sheridan yes. series that's the prequel to Yellowstone, eight, 1923. Some, 1823? Or no, that's 1883, 1923. With Helen Mirren? Yeah, Helen Mirren. Who Mir- never Helen gets Mir- old. I mean, Helen oh my God. Helen Mirren. Talk I would spread the, her on a cracker. I mean, the queen oh, of all of it. So amazing. So Harrison Ford, that's why I... And the new Indiana Jones is coming out in summer. And he's doing that too? What do you think? Is he 100 now? What is he? I will... Let me cut to... Is he 75? He's 80 years old. He is... Are you kidding me? Not mad still, about it. Well, you know... Not mad about it. Um, there Does have, he look 80 to you? No. No, no, That's no, all no. you need to know. Uh, Clint Eastwood was 86. He looks a million. And in a... Well, he looks like garbage. Well, he does, but he was still killing it. Me, he no care, Okay. He was the mayor of some town one time. Well, I that's, that. it was probably weird. and he, he, I think he's odd. But he makes good movies, but then no talkie. You know so I mean? you think you don't think Harrison Ford then is weird and quirky? I think he's, um, I think he's probably weird because all actors are weird. Yeah, I think, yeah. Quirky? That's true. I'm not picking up a quirky vibe. I'm picking up a <laughs> dry humor, hilarious sex pot married to Calista Flockhart, which is fine or whatever. But I think that he's, no, I think he's just probably kind of grumpy. He like does. Like a sexy grumpy. You think there's a sexy, sexy grumpy. grumpy. Yeah. Grumpy old man. Yeah. Well, but not like Walter Metha R.I.P. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Both of All those right. are, them are oh, dead. So. Okay. So Harrison Ford's uh, in that and um, he's in that Taylor Sheridan thing. Yes. Now here's a movie that totally warmed my heart in such a way. But when you go to Rotten Tomatoes, they're a bunch of rotten liars. They did not rate it well. And I absolutely loved everything about you people you on people. Netflix. It was amazing. It was important. Let, it let's was talk so about the sweet. cast. Jul- Jonah Hill. Yes. Eddie Murphy. Yes. Julia Louis Dreyfus. Mm-hmm. Um, Lauren London. Lauren. Yes. There are names. David Duchovny. Y- y'all, David Duchovny. Eddie Murphy is like talk about seventy five. He looks about thirty. He's sixty. Okay, but he looks thirty. He's got to be older than sixty now. I think he's sixty. Okay, he he's been around a lot. He started very young. We probably. saw him when he was like eighteen. Yeah, I think that's he was true. Like that's true. I was like early, early Saturday Night Live. Like he's really young. He's a genius. He is. He's brilliant. Yes. He's killing it. Yes. So the premise, have y'all seen this? The premise of this story is two groups of people that get together, their cultures divided, like all of different groups of people. It doesn't matter your skin color. It's just maybe where you live, you grew up. And they are both culturally insensitive um, and not Well, knowing. intolerant, I think. It's more, and like, but... What's funny is like the difference between so it's a, a black family and a white family. Yeah, but the white and family's the, the, Jewish. The, the the yes, and the conversation is like, can this work in our in this day and age? Yes, because of you know the climate. So what was interesting is that uh, Jonah Hill's parents are pseudo woke. They yeah. think they're woke. They think they're and right. they're so offensive. And Julia and she, you, they're just not. They're not talking to Lauren London as a human being. She wants to be the hip mom who has a black daughter-in-law. Like, a, you know, like she, yes. she thinks that she's super woke. And like, that is so common. Thinking that you're really woke and it's like, it's so the opposite. It's like even more offensive than if kind of almost if you weren't. But then Julia Louis-Dreyfus takes the cake and in, in, in things that happen yes. that are so insensitive. Oh, it's so cringe. When the, weave, so cringe. When the weave comes off at well, the party. Oh, it's that, that, I couldn't, I had to close my eyes because it was so... It, it was so wild, mm-hmm. but what, and then, you know, uh, Eddie Murphy and Nia Long, Nia Long is the wife. Yeah. And, um, they are not accepting of Jonah Hill. No. Um, and they're just like, this is ridiculous. Like, yeah. So both you know, people have dug their both, heels yeah, into Both their families cultures. are not willing to, um, merge. That's right. And so they're, the, the Jonah Hill and Lauren, they're trying to figure it out. But she's you know, a beautiful girl, and by the she's way. wonderful. And they uh, they both have this like each of them have their own obstacles within their own parents. Mm-hmm. And then they, when they come together, it's so cringe. But, you know, neither of both parents are trying to fight this. So it's almost like it's like one of those rom coms where you're like, I and I, these rom coms stress me out because when the parents are trying to keep the kids yeah. apart. Yeah. God, I mean, like 
get a life. Get like a it life. just bothers me. Get a life. I understand this like is more relevant. I you know, but I just it was so hard to watch. But Eddie Murphy makes it so much easier to watch because he's so funny. So does Julie. I mean, like this cast makes it so doable okay. and like so lovable and, and it's so loving. Someone may have cried in the room. I absolutely cried. Okay. Absolutely cried. It was so sweet. It ties it back. It really Did you works. Whitney's over there going to it was too. And it was such a good message for people today yes. and it was just so sweet and loving and it's that's why you have, you go through all the feels. And that's why I love this rom-com because you feel cringe. Wait, that's anxiety, under the rom-com ca- in genre and I liked it yes well, it's a rom-com chalk one up for me oh my god Lisa wins yeah because I don't like the rom-coms because they're too corny they're too predictable this was not predictable no in it was fact, really relevant and yes, perfect very yes. relative in fact I didn't think things were gonna work out you know, right I don't want to say anything else but well it's I think it was it's a really good it was a really good time to make this movie and I think it was it's a good conversation for everyone to have and it makes you feel more comfortable and safer asking questions and and, and to be more intentional of looking at people just as human beings yeah not culturally just human to human yes we're just all the same people like Y'all, David Duchovny cringe. oh my god he's so cringe he's great he's though. the He's, he's amazing. He really And is, these yeah. are a bunch of like super like, you know, thoughtful humans playing mm-hmm. these roles that are like very, mm-hmm. you know, not playing their actual characters, no. but playing them perfectly yeah, because they, they know what they it's really like. They, they, they get it. It's no, funny. No, it was very, very good. Yeah. Very well done. Loved it. Um, oh, the get next to the, get, one. Cut to the chase here. I want to talk about, you know what? <sighs> my Pamela, girl, my a love girl. story on oh, Netflix. Oh my God. And then talk about tears. Oh, and talk about oh. over tweezing in the eighties and nineties. That's that's another conversation. Why my she sister and my mom did the same thing. Did theirs grow back? I've been trying to help them for okay. years. Well, they can microblade now. Well, you can no. I mean, I just gave them some serum. And okay. Well, give they some, can, send some to Pamela Anderson. The Pamela Anderson story is so lovely. Her boys love her so much, and she loves her some Tommy Lee. I right? have always loved her. I've always loved her. I, I thought she was so underrated and so much smarter uh, than what people thought she oh, was. Oh, she's very smart. She, she knew what she actually, was doing. Actually, like, she's really, like, I think she might be, like, a genius. And didn't get but a dollar loves. for, like, all the videos she did for I don't Playboy. blame her. I think oh. that, like, that might be one of my favorite aspects of making her, like, a hero. That she didn't want any money from I the know. sex tape that she could no, have gotten. No, not even the sex tape. But just the, the, the play. People were like, you must be really loaded. She goes, I didn't make money on the Playboy stuff. Everyone used her name. Yeah. And she was, that was, like, her intro into Hollywood. Yeah. But she is so, like, such a compassionate, empathetic, like, wonderful woman. She is. And she's so tough. Lives back with her family And she's in so beautiful. And, uh-huh. you know, my favorite thing about her is all she loves is love. She loves love. That's what she says. And she is unapologetic for just giving it a shot every yeah. time. Did she marry Kid Rock? She did. She did. But she was mm-hmm. into the love. And so mm-hmm. like we, we 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 let that slide because like and one, then, there's no judgment on her. But No, but then the other Rock. guy she was married to. This, Tommy Lee. They no, love. Then after Tommy Lee, the other. Rick Solomon. Yeah. That's another. That, is that well, the one leaving her all the money? No. So, so and then's leaving her a bunch of money. Oh, it is Rick Solomon. Did he die? No, no but when he dies. Really like one of them when he died. They she, all love her they still. All love of them love her. her. They have nothing bad to say about her. Tommy Lee, she and she said, she's like, I I will always love him. But when he hit her, I know. she did not look back. I and know. I think that's amazing because you would think this like bimbo blonde like she who just wants to be on like you know and like she would, would, no she had a child she was like i have these two boys i'm out and, and that was like it changed boys, her whole life they love their and mommy. they love their mom and they love their dad I know, I and know. people are imperfect and it's mm-hmm. such a good example they're of like boys too. people can mess up and there is like redemption you know unless you're you know ill but i think that you know she believes in redemption to a fault yeah but She's a wonderful woman. It's it's I something adore her. you need to watch. Anyone, Pamela, love story, and I hope she got paid, gets paid. Oh in yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, oh yeah. They, from this. she had to make a deal. Yeah, hope especially so. after the. I feel bad that I watched the Hulu. Oh, the Tom and yeah, uh, Pam, Tom, and Tommy, the Pam and Tommy yeah. story. Yeah, it was still uh, well, it's still well yeah. done, but like it was all right. I, I had some guilt, but then well, because when you hear her side. Yeah. Then you realize she really was exploited. Yeah, and they did not ever catch. The, so they never. I thought they caught the person that did it, that stole the safe, and they didn't. Mm-mm. 
So there's there was some guilt there. And they did did they marry she and Tommy after like four days? Yes. <laughs> they did. I mean all that's like it. my goals now. I'm turning forty soon. Like that's right. all I want to do for like the rest of my life. Just get a bunch of times. Bunch of times. Oh yeah. Love love. You want to love Everybody love. buckle up. I'm about 100%. to get the new Pam Anderson, but you know, not naked. Right. Well, I'm 40. You don't want to see that. All right. 100%. Or do you? Just okay. Um, the next one, I'm just mentioning Shotgun Wedding with Jennifer Lopez, only because Jennifer Coolidge is in it. I loved it. And Jennifer Lopez was really funny in it. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's right. a rom-com. It's stupid. See, that's it. That's it's what I think movie. of rom-com. It's an action rom-com. Josh Deschamel adores. I do love him. Jennifer Lopez actually said the F word a bunch, so I, obviously I loved it. <laughs> and she was funny and just like, it was just like, I guess no. I just know she's so needy, and she and Agreed. Ben are I mean, in a she, bad way right now. I, where did you hear that? I, I saw it. Did you see them together oh. at one of the award show or something? And I think she he married ordered, Ben Affleck. I know she, he ordered a drink. He did. It looked like it, didn't it? And it looked like her words were saying, "What are you doing?" And he was like, "Man, okay, you know, he's he's." Mm-hmm. So I know, I know. Google that one. My demois did not tell me this. <laughs> but Jennifer Coolidge is in it, and Jennifer Coolidge is having a moment. because. So last oh. time we didn't... Did we talk about White Lotus last time? Because if we did... I watched White Lotus season one, but I don't think we talked about it. Oh! Well, oh. when my father tells me to watch White Lotus season two, uncomps, but I'm like, no, nope, you you're need, hipper than I am. You need to watch it. I'm going to, but... And Jennifer Not Coolidge, when my dad tells me to. Okay, wait. Jennifer Coolidge should win an award. She has. She's won all of them. Okay. She won a SAG award like two nights ago. Because you're not ready for oh, it. Oh, God. She is. Just don't tell me she does something like the end of season one. No, 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 I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to tell you anything because you're not going to figure it out. But when, when it happens, <laughs> you'll, you'll, get, you'll text me and say, it happened. Oh, good. So, yes. Um, me, I'm. Here's one that was a uh, rom-com that y'all made me watch. I didn't watch it. Your Place or Mine with Reese Witherspoon and Ashton I had to be Kutcher. really hungover and needy to watch it, though. I've been saving it. Okay. I've well, been you've been hungover in a while. Maybe sober. tomorrow. Yeah, because... Well, no, but I've been pretty good. I think tomorrow, it's a snoozer. Maybe. Darren liked it. I just love them. I, 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 I'm going to watch it at some point. Yeah, I'll like it. It's predictable. Oh if they're, if a rom-com's not predictable, I know. it's not a rom-com. And I don't okay. want to watch it. Okay. That's why you watch it. That's why I didn't think You People was a rom-com. Because it wasn't it's, predictable. It, right. But it can be, it can still be in that category. Could okay. Be. You're right. Multiple You're right. categories. That's right. Because it's a romantic Kind of like comedy. the menu is like horror, but dark comedy. comedy. Yes. Okay. Here's one, um, mm-hmm. as we say, not a lot of yucks. But it has an Arkansan is the lead, and it's the Morgan Nick story. Still missing Morgan on Hulu. It's so sad. Oof, eesh. I wrote, look at my notes. I wrote eesh. It is an eesh. In all caps. I really thought that for some reason I'd missed a news story and we were going to find some like. Well, uh, you, you make the deduction that it, you think a season two? Yeah, okay, there is. Okay, you, you, you assume that. We've pegged the guy, but he's no longer here. Right. The guy with the red pickup that was really a Chevy, but was Ford, and he didn't have the back. I mean, all these things. It's just so complicated. It is so complicated. This little girl y'all was playing, as Morgan we know, Nicks. Morgan Nick in 1995 Morgan was playing at a ball field in Alma, which is, you know, suck your toe, Arkansas. It's a tiny town. Yeah. Out, off you the pass Arkansas it on the way to Fayetteville. River. Yeah, tiny town. And um, the mama who has gained notoriety because of, of what she's done for really missing like children her, by the way oh she's well you see why their marriage broke up the blame that she got all those oh, I can't even and like i know that. it's hard and she said i was always the strict mother and they were like just let her walk off a minute well she walks off and she lo- loses her daughter the one time the one time and wait and you love her the little girl because she joined the girl scouts because you get to stay inside in color yeah. you know like she didn't want to do anything Sweet. athletic outside so like she was so endearing and um, we've never found a body. There's so there's no real closure for the family. So there was like literally no trace, no trace, of her ever since. D- just vanished, just completely vanished in plain sight. Yeah. I so, mean, I didn't know about the boys that had that she was falling with it, and she stopped to tie her shoe. Tie her shoe, know, and I didn't know that a man had walked up. To that was it. Talk. I just right. It was just 
It's God. very difficult, very difficult, yeah. but it's something that... It's you, important you should watch it's it. It's important that you watch yeah. it. Now let's talk about something, oh, the Southern scandal. And the first thing that's going to blow your mind is it is not pronounced Alex Murdaugh. It's Alec Murdoch. Alec Murdoch. Alec Murdoch. He'd say, well, I'm Alec Murdoch. Alec Murdoch. And it's Murdoch, not Murdoch. Murdoch. Well, it's Alec Murder Murders. Mur- uh-huh. Okay. Thank it doesn't you. doesn't matter because they are surrounded by murders. And five murder murders in their family that we know of. He's maybe the fifth generation of the Murdoch family who are the solicitor generals or whatever sure. they call prosecutors mm-hmm. in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Another thing is the town is pronounced Beaufort and it's spelled Beaufort. Or Low Country. Is or Low Country. Right. I just know it's, it as Low Country lo- in South Carolina. Right. There are a lot of things. That Which are, I call the Marsh. What? Oh, right. I grew Thank up going you. to South Carolina. The Marsh. There are a lot of things woven into the story, and it's made us all watch the trial. Now, we're recording this the week. I think the defense rested today. Everybody rest now? But okay. I haven't watched his testimony. I know he, he went Snot up. Snot comes out of his I nose. can't. Snot comes out of his He. I know people that are like, he didn't do it. Hannah and thinks I'm like, he's going to walk. I think he's going to walk, too. Because his testimony is so good. He's so, he is so, he's taken care of. He's he going to walk. You're right. That's he's what right. she thinks. But, but he, like, when there's that much smoke... There, that's there, there is like a actual California fire around that family. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That doesn't go out, and he, everyone's like, "I don't know. I think it's fine. Like, I don't, I don't think you need it." But people in the community who know that they may not live to see their next birthday are saying, right, "Something's going to happen." Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me tell I'm, you what. When I'm sorry, when the when the housekeeper died, get out of here. You. Get out of here. The stairs. Don't talk to me. Don't even talk to me. That's confusing. I honestly swear to God, I thought they were going to say an, one of their animal dies. And I was like, I'm out. I hope they die in Burden Hill because I can't take this anymore. Okay. When the housekeeper falls up the oh, stairs with her Diet Coke no, and it spills. It. Forget it. Over a dog. And then I was like, oh my God, what happened to the dog? I then I might, obviously my initial thing is what happened to the dog? That's not what happened to the housekeeper. She was murder murdered. What happened to the dogs? Because they were being blamed. And then dude got like $4 million and didn't, and didn't give, give him to her, to her children. Oh my God. Are you joking? So the other crimes involved, even if he does walk for his murder dirter, um, there are many financial crimes that he committed that he, he embezzlement had, palooza. Yeah, and oh, embezzlement he's like the city. he's like the party man embezzler. Yeah, and liar and, and admitted he because lied because he spent all of his money on mad op- opioids, and then his son, <laughs> garbage station, because his dad is garbage king and his they son, actually killed uh, that beautiful girl oh, oh my god wait, that video wait that son and then the other son paul. is responsible for paul and then weird mouth uh, what was buster. weird mouth buster. buster oh i'm sorry buster. buster not to be confused with uh Hustler. arrested development right. which he was endearing oh. and hilarious oh. yes that's this guy oh, is, is disgusting like <laughs> Well, this guy's gross and murdered another random innocent victim on the road. But see, I think they had a triest. And yeah, they he did. Was gay, but no one wanted. Yeah, but Buster. he still he oh, murdered, totally him. murdered him. I mean, totally, totally, totally. Buster so. didn't want to be Buster. Yeah, Buster's about so to get people busted. die for that. Okay, children, I guess. So definitely, you need to watch. I'm all that. worked up again. I feel yeah, I know. Weird about that it. is uh, Netflix. Okay, here's something that I'm watching now. That's also on Amazon Prime. It's The Consultant. I haven't started it yet. <laughs> the Christopher Waltz. Are you wrapping me up? No, okay, no, okay, no. good. But we need like five more minutes. Yeah, we, we need some time. We have a producer's moment. Too, so oh, yeah. the producer's moment is uh, you need to watch The Consultant. I can't wait. Need more episodes. That lead is some German Austrian actress who actor who is Christopher done Waltz. Things. I didn't know him. He's won two Academy Awards from. How hilarious Quentin Tarantino movies that none of y'all like. He won for Inglorious Bastards and he won for Django Unchained. Oh, oh. Boop, boop. Guess you like him now. Okay, he's right? really good. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. He, this is dark that you have to take a break in between episodes because you need to kind of take your, catch your really? breath. The girl, What's it about? Um, he, they're running a, a gaming company in LA. This South Korean kid is n- 20 years old. He invents some game. It, it takes off. And so as the consultant, he has an arrangement with this guy. He said, hey, if you ever die, I'll take over the company. He goes, well, sign the paperwork. He goes, I'm not going to die. And he goes, well, I'll see you in two weeks. He goes, wait, what? And so somehow, magically, in two weeks, he does die. So I'm only on episode five. So, so that- it's sci-fi? 
I know it's uh, weird. I'm not into Star Wars. It's weird. I mean, it's uh, no, and they play. Mm, it's something. So the girl in I'm gonna watch it. In Jeffrey White, said, watch it. The, I do what he says. The White Lotus. <laughs> the first season of White Lotus. There's a beautiful girl with the curly hair. Yeah. O'Grady, maybe, um, is her name. She's this beautiful girl. She's in it, and she's the lead with okay. um, this uh, Austrian actor. I love great. Christopher Waltz because I love Quentin Tarantino movies, so I'm in. I know, so we hear. Darren. Jeez. <laughs> okay, now look at all these that you have added. So I just added some okay. what to watch. Like, all right. Things are coming up. So I'm, rap- I'm, I'm okay. okay. Well, Jesus. So The Last of Us is this new, like everyone's talking about it. It's the new zombie show, blah, 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 on HBO Max. But I have to tell you, I haven't, I've, I've watched one episode, but Pedro Pascal is my new numero uno because, oh, and I don't mean it like that because he is um, Spanish, but <laughs> I just meant he is my new number one because he was on Saturday Night Live two weeks ago. And it was the funniest Saturday Night Live I've seen in years. Like he was so funny. What? Oh my God. He's, he's adorable. Okay. He's so hot. He's so funny. He's so cute. So that's why I watched The Last of Us. Okay. And then the other new shows that are coming out, The Reluctant Traveler is starring Eugene Levy and, and they tried to get him to the show and he didn't want to do it because he doesn't like traveling. So that's kind of part of his charm. Okay. And okay, so I'm okay. very excited about that. And then I love Billy Crudup and he has an, you know, he's in the morning show and he's yeah. also got this new show called Hello Tomorrow. And I thought you would like this Lisa and Chris because it's about the future and they sell timeshares on the moon. And like that's the and that's the whole way of life, like the way of um, the economy. I love it. Right. So it just came it. out. Um, and Who then has I, that? It's Apple TV. That's Apple. Okay. And then just a quick touch base on the fact that um, Succession is ending after season four. That's what we need to discuss. This okay. is the story. So the Succession is our obsession. It's my favorite show. We've never seen anything like it. Hannah's in here. When we found out that he does da da dun dun dum in the McDonald's ad, we all just squealed. My head exploded. We love everything about the show. We mm-hmm. love the writing. They do say the F word more than they even Which is say. another reason why I love it. You I've know that. never I love seen. It, love it, love it. I, I, I've never seen anything like it. So Natalie is in New York recently. And what happened? Okay, so in a nutshell... Um, my bestie Lizzie and I went to dinner, uh, I took her to like a tent, we, we went with, uh, Bob and Cynthia East for Lizzie's birthday and kind of my birthday trip, they, they take us to do nice things. So Lizzie and I had a solo night, our last night in town, I took her to a 10 p.m. dinner at Balthazar, I was waiting to, yeah, on a, it was Saturday night. It was a Saturday night. Saturday night, yeah. So I took her for a late dinner, thinking we were going to see celebs, you know, whatever, we didn't, and by the end of the dinner, I mean, she had ravioli, and I was stuffed. So we were like, well, let's go back, and we were staying at the Wyrick, which is on 54th and 6th Avenue. Oh. And yeah. they had been, we had seen signs that they were filming stuff, and I always look at, you have, they have to say the licensing, and it was Right, said, but they don't have to tell everything No, but I sign. Googled it. So I thought there was some B-roll going on, and it said Sourdough, Product- Sourdough Productions LLC, Paul. I Googled it, it means succession. But I was like, oh, they're just doing some like background shots, like whatever. So That's you neat. knew at that point. Well, it was I just succession. knew it was like going on. I was like, oh, okay. But I th- I knew they were filming in Italy, like whatever. And they film at I'm not midnight, weird. right? Because well, they have to. If you, well, so what we learned is like we get this Uber takes us home and our streets blocked off in front of our hotel. We go behind the barricade and Lizzie asks the guy, she's like, what's going on there? And Fifth Avenue's closed for two blocks. Wow. We see all these lights. He's like, oh, they're filming a HBO show. And, oh. uh, succession she looked at me <laughs> slow motion and I go what and we just start walking straight up the street we go through the barricade onto 5th Avenue there's just like all these lights but y'all are dressed all these actors like, we are soups cute that's okay, we I are thought. dressed to the nines we're like I mean we're like ready for me to meet someone cute you know what I mean and like she's a good team player and like, you're she's gonna get a good married man. a lot so that could have been one it was right could have been in a, well it could have happened you know had well okay. hold on one second so I, um, we walk straight onto the set. We didn't realize it was the actual set of succession. So they're using the street cause they're doing this like protesting scene and everyone's, all the extras are dressed in sweatpants and sweatshirts and like ski masks cause they're protesting and with these signs. And I was like, okay, act like you belong. And Liz's like, Hey, and we are sticking out like sore thumbs cause we cute AF, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so we just don't say anything and we're standing there and she, I was like, just watermelon. Water. I was like, don't say real words just like pretend like we're just cash all of a sudden oh my god i'm so used to saying that word roman walks right behind lizzie and she goes oh. i was like oh my god and he's like in full roman outfit he's wearing a pl- that's kieran culkin. culkin kieran culkin is wearing and like as we're walking lizzie reminded me after the story i was like what if we get up there and bleep bleep bleep, bleep, bleep. roman's there filming 
And she was like, there's no way. I was like, there's no way Roman's going to be there. Anyway, he walks out, Kieran Culkin, he's in full Roman hair, everything. And he sees us and he turns around and like points at us because they've obviously been doing multiple takes and he points at us and he like smiles. He's like, cause we're new. Cause we're clearly not in our sweatpants doing this like protest scene. And he didn't say anything. He didn't tell on us. He's like, and he goes to his mark and he's like jumping up and down, getting ready for the scene. And then Lizzie and I are like, oh God. I was like, we're going to get busted and it's going to be humiliating. I was like, just, just don't touch your phone. Were you on camera, do you think? So the cameras were here, but there wasn't, it wasn't being filmed yet. So okay. it was between scenes. Okay. So all of a sudden, like the director's talking to, to Kieran Culkin and getting bumped up and he and I keep making eye contact because I'm facing him. Lizzie's facing the actors. She's pissed about that. Tough shit. Okay. Tough because stuff. And you, you it just said happened. It, you weren't making eye contact with Kieran Culkin, but with Roman. With Roman. He right. was in full Roman. Full Roman. Because he's married with children, I respect that. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not. not I'm not nasty. But now, anyway, Roman. but he was in character, and like, so we kept making eyes because he also kept thinking, like, how long do they think this is going to last? It's like what I now think. So anyway, Liz and I are going back and forth. She's like, I, my knees are buckling. I'm like, I know. So the director goes up to Roman, and then the assistant director comes up to us. He's like, Okay, everybody, right in front of me and Lizzie. He's like, With the lights, are, all right, we're going to do the same thing we were doing. Everybody just face that way. And I was like, I looked at Lizzie. I go. Bleep, 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 bleep. We need to call it. Because I respect the show so much. It's 1230 at night. It's freezing good. outside. I know. They're so, this show is so well done. Like, we would have caused some, like, I know. BS. Right. So, Liz is like, wait, wait, wait. We could be on succession. I go, dude. She's like, we're about to be on succession. I go, not the right way. Not the right way. So, I look at him, and I make, and I, and I, I let her go turn around and walk back through the barricade. She was like, they hadn't called action yet. They were like, all right, everybody get ready. In position. And we're just, no one's saying this so for us to move. how close were you to Roman? Or uh, where Darren is. Like Two feet? Less than 10 feet. And he's like jumping up and down, getting ready, getting ready. And and he's laughing at me and Lizzie because he knows we weren't in that previous take. But he's oh, not saying anything. He's not telling on us. I was like, gosh. so we, but we hadn't signed anything. I knew. I know, I respect right. the process, people. Right. I'm an I adult. I know you do. I know you so do. I look at Lizzie and I was like, they're about to do this. Like, we got to go. I, I like, we got to, we got to know when to fold them. And so I was going to go turn around and walk over. She's like, no, I go do it. Not oh, you. you gave that. Face. Yeah. I was like, we're going to get embarrassed. We're going to be embarrassed. Like they're going to have to yell at us and like ruin my chances in the industry. Lizzie doesn't care. She has children. So, <laughs> but I want to be a movie star. So we turn around and we walk, we're walking towards the barricade. I look back at Roman and he laughed and like winked. Cause he was so impressed with the fact that like, I think that we were like not causing a thing, but we you knew when to call it. We're adults. I mean, I'm, turning 40 and then we walked all the way down the street and they and we just and then I called Angela immediately and was like you're not gonna believe and I made her think there was like an emerg a family emergency because well, she wasn't was. answering yeah well right. she didn't answer don't not answer at 1 30 it in the was 1 30 in the morning like come on and I know I called I called Darren I called Jeffrey I called everybody I was like you, I yeah, thought I did me. yeah no, I you texted you yeah you you got in touch with me for I sure. called I was like no one's gonna believe me because in my dreams and in my head it's going to spiral into something that it wouldn't. I know. <laughs> like, that's easy to... I, I'm, I'm real good at but that. But wait, on your podcast, put your books down. Yeah. You made reference to it and you called yourself Little Jerry. Little Jerry. <laughs> so I wanted to create this fictional character that I thought was maybe going on between me and Roman on set. Yes. That I could be Little Jerry. He because he fantasizes I can't just be his Jerry. love interest. No, right. We know how that works out. Right. Not well. But he loved the Jerry and his mom. So I could be like, if I were Jerry's like granddaughter. Okay. And yeah. then, you know, he would be interested and use me to get to Jerry. That could have been a whole additional script. I think so. And I, I think so. That could give us the fifth season. I mean, I made, getting. I made, I can tell you that I made up a little Jerry <laughs> myself. And, and now that, that we, we know, thank but you. thank you. But I know that now the show is ending and I, there's no little Jerry. So well, Jerry's out. The story is Succession will drop, we think, in maybe April. In the March 26th, first episode. Uh, oh, I'm about to breathe wondering. into a paper bag. Yeah, it's soon. Um, Ted Lasso drops in March, too, yes. but nothing competes with Succession. Well, I mean... And it's the fourth and final season. It's the fourth and final season. I can't wait. So wait. I think that there... I'll tell you, I, I word on the street that I was on during filming. Yes. <laughs> is that it was a... It's like a funeral episode. Oh... We Logan. don't. We don't no. notice. We Logan's don't know. not gonna die, y'all. He can't. I feel like it's. He has too many f bombs to drop. It's either Logan or Kendall. 
<gasps> Kendall. But I don't right. know if it's Kendall because he but, just did that GQ interview and either, right. either played the whole world. But by now we dumb. see that Tom turned and he. Tom's ratted the out. man. Tom is great. But, Cousin Greg. <laughs> oh, Greg. God. If he were, if it was his funeral, I'd be like, whatever. But I do love him. <laughs> I know. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Put Your Books Down is Natalie's podcast. Right. That drops. Thank you so it, does much. Does it drop on Tuesdays, too? Tuesdays. Yeah. yeah. And Darren does that. She does it with her best friend who she lived in New York with. Angela, Angela. Angela Bingham and I do this uh, podcast. It's a pop culture meditation. It's very ridiculous. Manage your expectations on seriousness because it's not. Okay. And it's. If abs- you need a break from. It's absolutely endearing. It's from. Um, I guess it's, I don't Life. even know what the news is now. The murder watch murders. it. Yeah. Well. But We're absurd. I was going to so. say, you may talk about that too. So, yeah, yeah if, it, if life you. is too heavy, listen to Put Your Books Thank Down. You. Uh, we'll do this again with Natalie in a few months. And uh, live studio audience, thank you for being here. Thank you. Love thank you, mean it. Love you, mean it. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe and download all the episodes and leave a review, won't you? The Lisa Fisher Said Podcast is produced by ClantonCreative.com.